All right. Welcome back, guys. Okay, so um, first we're going to start with higher derivatives. And we're going to go back to our example of a circle centered at the origin with radius 3. And from part 1, we remember that we took the, or we found the derivative, and the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to negative x over y. All right, that was one of the very first things we did in part one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find the second derivative. So we're going to find, we can call it y double prime, um, or if we wanted to use our Leibniz notation, d squared y dx squared, the double derivative. Okay, so we want to find the derivative. So let me, let me back up. So the double derivative is essentially taking our first derivative and taking the derivative with respect to x again. Okay, so that's the double derivative. So this is what we're going to do. So first of all, we do this, and we, normals, we normally do our product and our quotient rule first. We wouldn't hop in and just start taking the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom, right? Because that's not how quotient rules work. We have to use our quotient rule, and in the quotient rule, it prompts us to take the derivative of the top, and it tells us when to take the derivative of the bottom. So again, normally we use our product rule and our quotient rule first. Okay, so using that, we know, and I'll just put the um, negative sign in front, and we'll worry about it at the end. So our product, excuse me, our quotient rule goes like this. We take the derivative of the top function times the derivative of the bottom minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom. And remember, we're taking the derivative with respect to x, and this is a different variable. It's a y. So we have to assume that y is a function of x. So we're not going to write 1. We're going to write dy dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. And again, I just like to write y prime, just because um, it gets crazy, right, with implicit differentiation. And then um, keep going with our quotient rule. We divide by the denominator squared. OK. Well, good. So this is the part that's kind of fun, is we have this dy dx or y prime, and we solve for y prime before, right? It's negative x over y. So we get to make that substitution. So um, 1 times y is just going to be y on the top minus x times negative x over y, and then divided by y squared. Okay, so let's clean it up. Uh, negative times negative is positive, so it's going to be 1 plus um, x times x is x squared over y over y squared. And then this is a complex fraction. We don't like to have fractions within fractions. So to clear this denominator, what can we do? We can multiply top and bottom by y. Right? That's like multiplying every term by y. That's what keeps it balanced, and it's going to get rid of that um, denominator. So clearing our fractions, we're going to get y squared plus x squared. Ooh, that looks familiar. Over y cubed. And I just said y squared plus x squared looks familiar, right? And what is it? What is x squared plus y squared? Isn't that our circle? x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. So um, x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. That's what our original function says. Or not function. That's what our original equation said, that x squared plus y squared is equal to 9. So we can, we can make that substitution. All right? And again, that's because x squared plus y squared is 9. That's the situation we're in. All right, so notice the double derivative in this case 
had a lot of different substitutions. First, we had to substitute in the single derivative, and then we were able to make a substitution at the end using the original equation. Okay, so something to keep in mind when finding double derivatives. You might have to make a couple substitutions for um, quantities that we already know. All right, so we are going to now talk about um, derivatives of inverse trig functions. And we're going to find these derivatives of inverse trig functions doing implicit differentiation. Okay, so let's start with inverse cosine or arc cosine. Okay, so we are going to want to find the derivative of y. So that's the goal is find y prime. Let me, let me write that out. So we are going to want to find um, y prime or the derivative of y with respect to x, dy dx. So this is how we're going to, um, this is how we're going to do it. Inverse trig functions, if we're talking about the inverse of cosine inverse, it just gives us back, get, gets us back to the cosine. And when we go back and forth between inverse functions, just the x and the y switch. So y equals inverse cosine of x is equivalent to x equals cosine of y. All right, um, but we have domain restrictions because we want um, our cosine function to be one to one. So we restrict our angle to just be that first half of a period, all right? So we know the cosine function goes on forever. So it's not one-to-one, -one, right? Because we can draw several horizontal lines and the graph will intersect it infinitely many times. So to make it one-to-one, -one, we restrict the angle to just go from zero to pi. All right, and if we make that restriction, now our function's one to one, now we can find the inverse. Okay, so that, that explains why we just look from zero to pi. Okay, so what we're gonna do to find the derivative of the inverse cosine, right, to find y prime, we're gonna take the derivative with respect to x of both sides, we're gonna use implicit differentiation. Okay, so we're going to find y prime using the cosine of y is equal to x. All right, so what's the process? Well, we start by taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides. Okay, and then cosine y here, remember y is a function of x. So y is acting as the inside function and the outside function is cosine. So we start by taking the derivative of the outside function first. What's the derivative of cosine? Good, negative sine y. And then we take the derivative of the inside function. You can write dy dx, I just write y prime. Right, and then on the other side, the derivative of x with respect to x, well, since it's just an x and that's what we're taking the derivative with respect to, then it's just normal, right? Only when there's a y mixed in with everything, that's when it gets a little bit crazy and we have to remember the y prime. But this is just gonna be one, okay? So um, all the y primes are already gathered. They're already all on the left. So all we have to do is divide both sides by negative sine y. And we're gonna get that uh, y prime is equal to one over negative sine y. Okay, um, but look it, we have the derivative of y, but it's in terms of y. And we're trying to find the derivative of y up here, and we're saying it's inverse 
cosine of x. So we need y prime to just be in terms of x, and right now we have y prime in terms of y. So we're going to fix it, and th this is what we're going to do. So this is kind of a, a little tricky trick to, to um, get rid of that y. We're going to consider that cosine squared y plus sine squared y is equal to 1. And we're doing this, so I'll show you why. This is our thought process. We know that cosine y is equal to x, right? We know cosine y is equal to x. So I'm going to try to turn this sine into cosine, and then I can use a substitution. So I have to think, how does sine relate to cosine? And sine relates to cosine with the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so that's where the thought process is. To turn sine into cosine, we use Pythagorean. Okay, so um, let's solve for sine then. So we can subtract cosine squared and then take the square root. And it's square root property, so it should be plus or minus. Okay, so um, there we go. That's how we can turn sine into cosine. But where else are we? So we also know, let me draw a picture. Because look at when we take the square root of both sides, the square root property tells us to do plus or minus. And cosine squared, you know, we and uh, sine squared, we have this unit circle. But let's go up here. By definition, our angle is just going from 0 to pi. Okay, so keep that in mind. Our angle y is just going from 0 to pi. So if our angle y is going from 0 to pi, 0 to pi is up here. So what does that tell us about the sine value? What does that tell us about the y value? Is it going to be positive or negative all the time? It's always going to be positive. So um, plus or minus, it's never going to be negative. We can throw that out. The negative part is the bottom half of the circle. So we're just going to do the positive cosine squared of y. Okay? And now, why did we want to do this? Well, here's the substitution we're eventually going to make. We wanted to get rid of sine because it was in terms of y, right? We're trying to find the derivative in terms of x. Now we have a formula for sine. We still have a y. But if you remember, what's cosine y? Cosine y is x. Okay, so I'm going to write that off to the side. Um, that cosine of y equals x. And again, that's true since what are we trying to find the derivative of? y equals the inverse cosine of x. Okay, so I'm going to make that substitution. So now we have this sine y is equal to the square root of 1 minus cosine squared y, but it's x. So I'm going to substitute an x for cosine y, and then I'm going to square it. OK, so we did it. So we had sine y. We wanted to get it in terms of x, right? And cosine y is in terms of x. So we use the Pythagorean theorem to turn sine into cosine. So we were able to do our substitution. And now we have a derivative that's only in terms of x. All right, I'll use a, a rainbow for this one because this is very exciting. So um, we have our y prime, or dy dx, you know is equal to, let's see, it was negative 1 over sine y, but we just talked about how now sine of y is the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, and so then that's that. So here, here we go. We wanted to find the derivative of the inverse cosine function. And we did just that. 
it's going to be negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And we can put a box around that. That's one we're, we're going to want to memorize. Okay, so there you go. So um, I want you guys to try to derive one. And then I'll give you guys all six of them. And then all six inverse trig functions I'm going to want you guys to memorize. So here we go. Um, so for y equals inverse tangent of x, I want you to find y prime um, or, you know, dy dx. And there it is. And then just to let you, or give you guys a hint, just in case it's been a while, um, you know, this is the same, just like we did before, we can switch the x and y and use the original tangent function. The domain restriction is uh, po negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, not including those endpoints, because remember that they have asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. All right, so using that, let's see if you guys can find the derivative of the inverse tangent. So go ahead and push pause, and then come back and check your solution. Okay. So just as before, we're going to use tangent yx to find the derivative. So we're going to start by taking the derivative with respect to x of both sides. All right. Um, on the left, because we have that y and we're taking it with respect to x, we have to assume y is a function of x. So we have our outside function tangent we have our inside function y. So what's the derivative of tangent? Secant squared, okay? And then the derivative of the inside function. I'll do dy dx just to switch it up a little bit. So here's the derivative of the outside function, here's the derivative of the inside function. And now the derivative of x with respect to x is just one, okay? So we're solving for this dy dx. So all the terms are gathered, so we just have to divide both sides by secant. Squared, that is. Okay, and then looking at this, this isn't good enough because our original function was in terms of x, right? And so we can't give them a derivative in terms of y. So we have to figure out how we can turn this y into an x, okay? And what we do know is, let's see, a tangent y is in terms of x. So we have to think, how do secant and tangents relate? We can do a little side work. Secants and tangents relate also by the Pythagorean theorem. We're just dividing everything by cosine the Pythagorean theorem by cosine. We have this relationship, right? So that will be good because again, tangent of y is equal to x. So that's gonna get us our goal where we can get the derivative just in terms of x. All right, so um, maybe what you did is you made that realization. Here, I'll draw an arrow for that thought bubble. And we said that secant squared of y was like 1 plus tangent squared of y. And we know that tangent y equals x. So we substitute tangent of y for x. And then, you know, we squared it still. And then that's that, 1 plus x squared. So we have then that the, um, the derivative of our inverse tangent function is equal to 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, and then that's a fairly straightforward proof. So just like I would have you guys derive some of the derivatives for the trigonometric functions, I might have you guys derive some proofs for the inverse 
trigonometric functions, those derivatives, okay? So that's definitely something in your um, capability. All right, so let's see those six inverse trig functions that you guys are going to memorize. So we're going to look at the derivative of the inverse sine function. And there's, they're all very similar. So see if you guys can pick up on the patterns when memorizing them. It's 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Right? And there's patterns because, you know, there's patterns within the trig functions. They're all kind of related to one another using sine and cosine and reciprocals and stuff like that. Um, and then the methods are the same, right? We're using, you know, some form of, of um, the chain rule and implicit differentiation. That's why we're seeing all those nice similarities. All right, and then the inverse cosine is similar. It's negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And then we have the tangent, derivative of the inverse tangent is equal to, we just found that one, 1 over 1 plus x squared. Okay, and then we have the reciprocals, the derivative of the inverse cosecant is equal to um, 1 over negative x times the square root of x squared minus 1. The derivative of the secant, inverse secant, something similar, 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And then the derivative of the cotangent, the inverse cotangent, is equal to um, 1 over, whoops, excuse me, negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. All right, so these are your functions to memorize in addition to all of your other derivative rules.